All right, now we're joined by Peter McCullough, who's with uh, the Yes on 1464 campaigns. Why don't you take up to five minutes to tell us why to vote yes? Thank you. Uh, well, again, as Jeff just said, my name is Peter McCullough. I'm the campaign manager with Yes on Initiative 1464. Uh, and I'm here to request that the 36th Legislative District Democrats uh, endorse Initiative 1464 for the November ballot. Uh, by approving Initiative 1464, we can take some major steps here in our state to improve transparency and accountability in our government and our politics, limit the influence of big money in our elections, and give regular people a stronger voice in their democracy. Uh, it's, time, it's time that regular people have a stronger voice in their democracy, especially here in Washington. For far too long, uh, our system has been controlled by lobbyists and corporations and wealthy special interests. Uh, who have far too who have far too much power both in Olympia and in Washington D.C. Uh, it's a system that has increasingly become rigged against regular people and in favor of big money interests, and it's not working. Uh, Initiative 1464 will start to reform that uh, here in Washington State by limiting big money influence and empowering citizens in several ways. First. Increasing transparency by requiring that super PACs and independent expenditures include the names of their actual top donors in the ads so people know who is really paying for the ads they're seeing. It will limit big money influence by lobbyists and public contractors by restricting the amount of money they can contribute directly to people that they are trying who make decisions about issues that they're lobbying. Uh, it closes the revolving door of government officials taking jobs as lobbyists immediately upon leaving office. And it toughens enforcement of ethics and campaign finance laws in the state and increases the penalties for those who break them. And finally, it creates a voluntary taxpayer-directed donor system so that everyone can support candidates of their choice, giving, the, giving a stronger voice to underrepresented communities and empowering everyone in Washington state to make their voice heard. Uh, our current system makes it far too easy for lobbyists and, uh, and big money interests influence government decisions and elected officials through campaign contributions and gives a wealthy few far too much influence over our government. Uh, it also creates too many opportunities for politicians and elected officials to profit from their experience by turning around and immediately lobbying uh, up, upon leaving office, which also opens the doors for political deals that are cut to benefit the few while leaving the many left uh, behind. Initiative 1464 places special limits on uh, contributions from lobbies and contractors, barring them from making big contributions uh, to those that they would attempt to influence, and takes an important step in the right direction of reforming money in politics so that we can have leaders who work, to, who work on behalf of everyone and not just those who can afford to hire lobbyists or fund campaigns. It will empower voters to give everyone, by giving everyone the option to direct some of their own tax dollars to support candidates of their choice. A self-funding system that will, all, that will help candidates run for office without having to cozy up to big money interest or big donors, and also enable new kinds of candidates to run and open up the potential uh, for, for more people to run for office, even if they aren't wealthy or well-connected, so that regular people are represented in the process and not shut out. Uh, and most importantly, Initiative 1464 is self-funded, self it pays for itself by closing a special interest tax loophole that only benefits people from other states and a handful of other states. So it doesn't cost Washington residents a cent, and it doesn't take money away from any other uh, important priorities like education, transportation, and public safety. Every Voice Should Matter, which is why Initiative 1464 is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Washington and has already been endorsed by a cross-partisan coalition of organizations and leaders ranging from the King County Democrats, the Pierce County Democrats, the Spokane County Democrats, and groups across the state, to Tea Party Republicans and conservative, uh, conservative reform groups like Take Back Our Republic. Initiative 1464 has been endorsed by the Progress Alliance of Washington, the Faith Action Network, Sightline Institute and the Economic Opportunity Institute by Fix Democracy First uh, and End Citizens United and many, many others. Uh, community leaders across the state are supporting Initiative 1464 uh, and we are proud to have the support of moderates, progressive, and conservatives because this is an issue that we should all be able to agree on, that we have to reform our political process so that it represents the public's interest and not just the voices of the wealthy, of the wealthy few. Um, we can talk a little bit more about the opposition to Initiative 1464 in a moment, but there's no surprise there. 
The opposition group is being backed and funded entirely by business lobbyists and special interest trade groups who want to keep things just the way they are. These are the same groups that have stopped efforts uh, to fully fund education here in the state and they don't want to see anything change. I hope that we will all understand the important choice that we have in front of us this November and we hope to have your endorsement and your support for Initiative 1464. Great, thank you. I will open up to a couple of questions. I have one then Mary. So you mentioned the opposition and um, I was, uh, as before we started the interview I mentioned that I'd invited the no side and I didn't hear back. Uh, I wonder, could, could you um, run through some of their arguments against and then of course um, respond to them? Yeah, so there are, there are actually two groups that are filed uh, with the PDC. One of them we think is a, is a group that is not really going to be opposing. Uh, the, the primary group uh, calls themselves Our Kids Before Politics, uh, and, and, and they've made a number of arguments in their um, voter guide statement, and I'm kind of assuming that that's where they're going. The first among them is they make the claim that we shouldn't be using public money to, to fund campaigns, uh, and that that would take money away from education. I think there's two problems with that argument. The first is that the whole point, uh, the point of funding elections uh, is to make sure that we are electing politicians or electing uh, elect leaders who represent everyone in the state. But when we have privately funded elections, especially ones that are heavily influenced by big money, uh, we, oft we oftentimes don't get leadership that can represent all of the people in their district. They have to spend too much time focusing on fundraising, too much time uh, maintaining relationships with big donors. This initiative can help to address that problem in, the way that, in a way that 18 other states have already done successfully. Uh, the second part of that argument, the claim that this is that the money that goes to this initiative could be used to pay for schools, a couple of problems with that. And first of all, it's a very small amount of money in the context of the, uh, of the amount of education funding that is needed for the state. And the groups that are sponsoring the opposition, including the Retailers Association, Association of Washington Business, Association of General Contractors, etc., are the same groups that have blocked every effort to fully fund education in the state including the tax loophole that is closed by this initiative, which has been in the last five budgets that have been presented, uh, and every time has been stripped out by business lobbyists and opposed. The money that is used to fund this initiative, as I mentioned, doesn't come from Washington taxpayers, uh, is not going to hurt Washington business, and it's money that, frankly, is never going to be able to be used to pay for schools in Washington State as long as it has to go through the legislature. Until we can start to clean up the system in Olympia, we're not going to be able to solve these real problems. And the groups that are behind this opposition are a great example of why. Uh, you referred to uh, an option to direct funds to candidates of their own choice, and mm -hmm. you also referred to 18 other states. Is that yes. the same option, and could you be specific and describe exactly what it is for you? Absolutely. So there are 18 other states that have some form of public financing program, and those fall into a couple different categories. The system that's most similar to this are, uh, there are five other states that have tax credit programs. Those states are Oregon, Minnesota, Arkansas, Ohio, and Virginia. Of course, in Washington, we don't have an income tax, so it's very hard to have a tax credit. But in those states, the idea is that you can make small contributions to candidates of your choice, and then you get that money back on your, uh, on your income tax. The system here in Washington is actually much simpler and would work uh, even better. Everyone in the state, uh, every resident of Washington state, would be allowed to, would be allocated three what are called democracy credits. Three $50 credits that can be directed to candidates who are opt-in and participate in the program. The candidates, it is open to state legislative candidates initially. Candidates who opt in have to accept stricter conditions, including lower individual contribution limits and limits on uh, self-financing so that they really are focused on small voters and more focused on their constituents. And then every voter in the state can choose whether or not they want to use their democracy credits and uh, if, they, you know, if there are any candidates they, they support, that they can direct them to those candidates. If people don't like any of the candidates or don't want any of their money, their money going um, to elected officials, they don't have to use their democracy credits. But if, for people who do, or people who want to support uh, candidates, they'll have the option of directing either all three of their credits to one candidate or any combination to, to qualify participating candidates. Where does the money for those democracy credits come from? So that comes from repealing the out-of-state sales tax exemption, okay. which is that loophole that I referenced before. I can talk in more detail about that if you want, but I'm watching the timer. David? Uh, talking more detail about yeah, so Washington's 
out-of-state sales tax loophole uh, exempts people from states with no sales tax from paying retail sales tax here in Washington State. That's only six other states in the country, Oregon, Montana, Alaska, Colorado, Delaware, and New Hampshire. People from those states don't pay retail sales tax here in Washington. In Washington. There's no other state in the country that has this kind of tax loophole built in. It is ostensibly meant to give an incentive for people to come here, but people aren't coming to Washington because they're not paying sales tax. They don't pay sales tax in their home state. They're coming to Washington because they want to come to Washington or because you know, we have better stores or better products. So this loophole, which the Washington Budget and Policy Center has reviewed and repeatedly called wasteful, uh, has said, and the joint review by the Legislative Commission in Olympia found zero evidence that it benefits Washington business. Uh, this loophole, which continues to be protected by these business groups, we would close that loophole um, so that people would then pay retail sales tax here in Washington. The extremely conservative revenue estimate on this is that it raises a little over $60 million every two years. The entire cost of this initiative is capped at no more than $60 million every two years. That includes the money for the democracy credit program, as well as the money for uh, increased enforcement and administration by the PDC, uh, both to be able to administer this program and to enforce all the campaign and ethics laws in the state. Very clear. Initially, state legislature, is that going to soak up? So part of why this initiative was initially uh, opened up just to state legislature was to make was to give it time to be able to test it and make sure that it didn't you know, that it, the system was properly funded and worked before trying to expand it. Um, so this has been studied, and Sightline Institute is going to be producing some more research on this and what they expect uh, the use of or how this program will end up working. Uh, it is possible for the state legislature to use up this uh, this entire 50 million, but what that would require is every candidate for state senate opting in and raising the maximum amount of money they could raise from the program, plus two thirds of House candidates opting in. So I would say it is very unlikely that the program will get maxed out um, in the first couple of years, and if it did. Uh, that would be a problem, but we think that would be not a bad problem to have, being that everybody in the state is, is opting and changing how they campaign, and that people are participating and, and turning out at a rate greater than any other state in the country. The amount of donors who would be participating here in Washington if that happened would be more than anywhere else. Clayton, mm -hmm. I have one. I read an anti screed um, there are a lot of those a few minutes, minutes ago from, from an outfit called something like PDN. Uh, does that mean at all? I'm not sure. Is it PDN or LDN? I'm not, I'm not sure which one it is. At this point in the game, there's <laughs> a fog about recall. Uh, so, uh, so let me look it up. Or eyeglasses. Maybe it was TDN. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. TDN. Yeah. There we are. There's recall right there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Who are they? Um, TDN, is that, it, sorry, is that an editorial? Can you tell me some of the things that they said? I'll, I'll, I'm not sure I know who. <clears throat> they, they said, um, I don't think they said it would raise <clears throat> 600 million. Oh, okay, now I know uh, what this is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was an editorial published by the Daily News, which is a newspaper in Longview, Washington. That's the TDN. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an editorial that was published opposing the issue very early on without ever having spoken to anybody in the campaign, in fact, refusing to talk to anybody in the campaign. It claims a number of things, like that this initiative would cost $600 million, which is very clearly not true. The fiscal impact statement written by the state rebuts that. Uh, so they had to publish several corrections to that editorial uh, mm -hmm. along the way. So going through kind of the exact, uh, I can go through the exact specifics if you want, but there are kind of too many uh, inaccuracies along the way uh, to, to get all at once. Uh, but the heart of their opposition, the Longview paper, was that they were very concerned about the out-of-state sales tax exemption. Um, and they also thought that we didn't have a problem here in Washington State with uh, voters having enough of a voice or, or being well represented in Olympia. Um, and we disagree with both those claims, and specifically the, the retail sales tax, which I talked about before, that every study that's been done on it has demonstrated that there's no evidence that, that it's a major benefit. You described the um, voluntary public financing uh, portion. It sounds very similar to what Seattle passed mm -hmm. last year, and that yep. goes into effect in uh, a few months. Um, 
I was part of that effort, and so I know all the details of the Seattle mm -hmm. model. Could, could you um, very briefly and in the least uh, dull manner for the rest of the people <laughs> who aren't as, I love the numbers, but uh, uh, like how, how much are each of the credits worth? How many can you get? How many do you need to qualify for anything? What, yep. Yeah, what are those numbers? Right, yeah, so I would say the, the system presented or, or proposed by Initiative 1464 is very similar to Seattle. The most important difference being it's less complicated. That there were a lot of really specific triggers and requirements built into the Seattle initiative that were very difficult to understand and explain. The state grant initiative has three conditions for candidates to opt in. The first is they have to demonstrate viability by having raised contributions of at least ten dollars from at least seventy-five people in their district. So you know you can't just get a random Yahoo who throws their name in, and they've got to prove that they're committed to uh, campaigning among their constituents. The second is the, the candidates have to accept a, a restriction that their contribution limit, individual contribution limits, would be lowered by 50%. So that they're more focused on small donors and on small contributions and less on big uh, contributions. And the last is that they have to accept a limit on self-financing of no more than $5,000 of their own money. And this is so that public money is not just subsidizing uh, wealthy individuals running their own campaigns. The way this works for Washington voters is everybody, all residents in the state, get three democracy credits of $50 each. So a total of $150 that they can direct to candidates of their choice. As I mentioned before, they can send all three to one candidate, candidate if they like, or two to one, one to another, whatever combination they like. People who use democracy credits are also free, still free to contribute their own money within whatever limits are allowed to whatever candidates they want to support. But the most important thing here is that democracy credits give everyone the opportunity to participate. People who either couldn't, either weren't interested before or who didn't have the financial resources to have a voice to make sure that everyone in Washington can be represented. And being able to contribute $150 to a campaign uh, you know, is, a, is a pretty significant amount, especially when we are lowering the amount of contributions from lobbyists and public contractors down from 1,000 or 2,000 down to 100. So now the average person can have as much of a voice uh, as a lobbyist. Great. Clayton Jenna. Yeah. Um, please, please walk me through the, the real life mechanics mm -hmm. uh, in my shoes. Uh -huh. uh, having And receiving credits. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm getting an email mm -hmm. uh, telling me that I've got credits. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, what happens next? Mm -hmm. So well, I'll take it back half a step. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'll take it back half a step. Uh, and so the lead into that is that there will be a phase of, of public education before this program is first administered of you know announcing the PDC helping communicate to voters, telling them that you know you'll be getting these in the mail, here's what they are, here's how to use them. When democracy credits are sent out, they'll go to a, a piece of mail will come from the PDC to every registered voter in the state that says, has instructions for how to use them and has a personalized code for everyone, which is your online code. If you don't have a computer or don't want to use one, you can request that paper credits be sent to you and that option, you know, the PDC will answer that. But for people who do want to use their credits online, you go online, you enter your information, including your code given by the PDC, it takes you into an interface where you can see here are the candidates who are participating and uh, eligible, and I can go through and I can choose to direct my, my credits to one, two, and three of them, however many. Uh, and the exact look and feel of that system will be set up and determined by, you know, that's part of the PDC and part of the implementation phase that you know, they need to, to work through that. Um, but Seattle is already working through a very similar system. But for everybody in the state, if you're already registered to vote, you'll get that letter in the mail with your personal login information, instructions for how to use it. If you are not registered to vote and you want to use your democracy credits, register to vote is the answer. But for people who are not able to register to vote but are legally allowed to, to use democracy credits and are legally allowed to contribute to campaigns, which includes people who are um, legal, uh, verified residents of the United States, green card holders, they can apply to the PDC and request their uh, democracy credits. Uh, their status as, uh, as a legal resident will have to be verified, and then they'll be, they'll, their democracy credits will be provided to them. Okay, so I, I reply to the PDC. I don't reply to my candidates. Nope. You'll be, yeah, you'll be going directly into the PDC website to... Right. And they keep tally of, mm -hmm. of my donations. Yeah. Yes. And then they actually cut the check to the candidate. Yeah, or it'll probably just be an electronic check. Right, right. Great. 
Uh, we are about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for closing statement. Great. Well, first, again, thank you all very much. I know it was great to have this conversation. I feel like a lot of our questions in this conversation focused on the mechanics and administration of the public financing program, and that's a very important detail, and I'm glad that we're all understanding it. Uh, but I also don't want us to lose sight of the other elements of this uh, initiative that are really critical. This, we have to give a stronger voice to, to the regular citizens and to every voter in the state. But the only way that works is if we also do the other elements of the initiative, the increasing transparency so that big independent expenditures can be held accountable, limiting the influence of lobbyists and public contractors, and doing more to make sure that big money doesn't have, doesn't have an advantage over regular people. Thank you. Great. Thank you.